A second problem with lithium aluminum hydride is that it absolutely tears through carboxylic acid derivatives. For example, if we start with an ester and we treat with lithium aluminum hydride, there's no way to stop this reduction process at the aldehyde stage. There's no way to stop it at the hypothetical ether stage. It goes all the way to a primary alcohol. This corresponds to a change in oxidation state from plus three to plus one. But what if we wanted to stop at the plus two oxidation level, which in this case would correspond to an aldehyde. We can do that using a reagent that's effective at what we might call partial reduction. We're not going all the way down the oxidation ladder. We're just going down one step. And a great reagent for this is diisobutyl aluminum hydride, or dibal-H, or sometimes just called dibal. Dibal is really interesting and different because unlike lithium aluminum hydride, the aluminum atom within dibal is neutral. This makes the hydrogen atom within dibal intrinsically less nucleophilic than the hydrogens we find in, for example, the aluminum hydride anion. This makes dibal a little less intrinsically reactive than the aluminum hydride anion, although we'll see in the mechanisms in which this reagent is involved, the coordination of a nucleophile to aluminum, which makes it negative, is an important part of the mechanism. But without that ability to coordinate, we don't see reactivity, and that's the beauty of dibal, which we'll see in a second. First, let's look at some examples of the reactivity of this reagent. Dibal is a partial reduction reagent, and that means we can use it to step down from the plus three to the plus two oxidation level. So for example, the use of dibal H at negative 70 degrees C, followed by workup with water, converts an ester into an aldehyde. Similar reaction conditions, here negative 64 degrees C instead of negative 70, converts a nitrile, in which this carbon is at the plus three oxidation level, again to an aldehyde upon aqueous workup. The low temperatures are worth noting here. This is important for stopping the reaction at the plus two oxidation level. If we warm this up, dibal has the potential to react again, getting us down to the plus one oxidation level in alcohols. In fact, temperature plays an important role in the reductions of amides by dibal. If we use it at low temperature, we get to a product at the plus two oxidation level, the aldehyde. And so dibal plus an amide at negative 70 degrees C gives an aldehyde product at the plus two oxidation level. However, if we warm up the reaction mixture to zero degrees Celsius, we observe different reactivity. The amide, again at the plus three oxidation level, is reduced to an amine, the plus one oxidation level. And this can be used to selectively reduce amides to primary amines, for example, in the presence of other reducible functionality like esters. Additionally, all three of these other reactions suggest that dibal can be used in substrates that contain both a carboxylic acid derivative and a ketone or aldehyde. Dibal H does not react with ketones or aldehydes under these conditions. If it did, of course, it would reduce these products down to alcohols, and we don't see that, so we can infer from this data that aldehydes and ketones built into the starting substrates, built into these R groups, for example, will not react under these conditions, which is really nice. This is another selective method. Now, at this point, we may be wondering, how in the world does this work? How, how can dibal selectively reduce a carboxylic acid derivative in the presence of an aldehyde or ketone? This is particularly remarkable since the aldehyde and ketone products are more reducible, more electrophilic intrinsically than the carboxylic acid derivative starting materials. So how in the world does this work? Well, really the key is this initial association of the nucleophile step, which is a prerequisite for the reactivity of dibal. Let's abbreviate dibal for the time being as R2ALH. Really, the isobutyl groups are just there to kind of attenuate the reactivity of this reagent, don't participate directly in mechanisms. And let's look at an example of an ester substrate in this reaction. The neutrality of the aluminum atom is key. This starting reagent is not really a great hydride source. It's just a neutral aluminum compound, but the nucleophilic carbonyl oxygen can coordinate to aluminum, and this changes the situation dramatically. After this coordination event, the aluminum atom is now formally negatively charged, and just like the aluminum hydride anion, this makes the hydrogen connected to aluminum an excellent nucleophile now. 
And in fact, we've set up a situation in which the transfer of hydride, H minus, from the aluminum atom to the carbonyl carbon is now a completely intramolecular process. This AD sub N occurs entirely within this single molecule here. The intermediate that results is a kind of tetrahedral intermediate in which we find an aluminum alkoxide containing an oxygen aluminum bond. The nucleophilic hydrogen has also formed a bond to the carbonyl carbon in this intermediate. Ultimately, where we're at here is in the middle of a nucleophilic acyl substitution mechanism where hydride has added to the carbonyl carbon and we can now eliminate the better leaving group, which is OR minus and alkoxide, to generate another intermediate now, which is essentially the aldehyde product, but still coordinated or bound to aluminum. Through something like an SN2 step at aluminum then, which I haven't listed explicitly in this mechanism, but which is definitely something we could think about here, or some kind of coordination to aluminum followed by loss of the O plus as a leaving group, we end up at the aldehyde product. And after this has happened once, Note the aluminum containing byproduct. It's an aluminum diisobutyl alkoxide. This isn't going to react again. It has no nucleophilic hydrogen within it. And if we rewind all the way back to the start of the mechanism, the thing to really notice is that the coordination of the ester to the aluminum was key. We can even rationalize this coordination and the selective coordination of the ester over, for example, an aldehyde or a ketone built into one of these R groups by thinking about the nucleophilicity and basicity of that carbonyl carbon. And we've discussed this previously, this idea that carboxylic acid derivatives with an electron donating group linked to the carbonyl carbon are intrinsically more basic and more nucleophilic at the carbonyl oxygen. And it's through electron donation like this, resonance type electron donation that I'm drawing here in purple, that we can see that the carbonyl oxygen of an ester or an amid is much more basic and much more nucleophilic, much more willing to coordinate to Lewis acids like aluminum than a plain vanilla ketone or aldehyde oxygen. This is why carboxylic acid derivatives can be selectively reduced by dival, especially when we lower the temperature down and we make this coordination difference between carboxylic acid derivatives and ketohydes especially important.